Good morning and welcome to the fifth, fifth Sunday of uh, Easter. Laura, did you get my note to go ahead and see if you can start Facebook Live? I sent my phone home with Maureen so she could find her phone. Oh, if I did not get your message, so we are not on Facebook Live. Um, uh, we're not set up. To, I don't have anywhere to put a, a device to do Facebook Live. No I'm problem. Sorry. I'll do that. I'll do that when she gets back. Okay. So first we of all, I'd like to welcome. Go ahead. We are recording on Zoom, and I will upload that to our YouTube channel when um, when we're done. I'll give send it to do that. Okay. Um, and here she comes with my phone now. Let me go ahead and get that on Facebook Live so we're so we're live. Thanks everyone for your patience with our technology. We're still figuring it out. Yes, we are. Hang on just a minute. Dick? Yes. Hi. See that you're on. Would you say a few words? Good morning, Manny. <laughs> Good morning to you too. Uh, go go ahead and mute yourself again. Jane, you say a few words. Facebook Live. We're just getting ready to start. Sounds we had good. Some technical difficulties. Do we want to do the prelude again? No, no. We'll okay. we'll move on. All right. So a couple announcements. One is uh, to let you know that we're coming to you from both St. Mark's and Casper and St. Peter's on Skidaway Island in Savannah. We want to thank St. Peter's for loaning us their sanctuary and some of their technology. Um, remind you that uh, if you got my letter this weekend, you know that we will get back into St. Mark's when we reach phase three in the federal and state guidelines and our bishop's guidelines. So we'll continue to do this at least for a few more weeks. I'm not sure when we'll reach phase three. Um, remind you of the red letter words of Jesus class. We have every, um, sorry, Facebook Live. I have to put this up here where you can see. Um, every Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock Mountain Time uh, where we talk about the words of Jesus. I, I'm good with that. And uh, I had another one. Yes, if anybody, some of you are tuning in that I don't even know who you are. So I'd be curious to know something about you. Feel free to Facebook a message and messenger or email me at jshumi at aol.com. And that's J-S-H-U-M as in mother, Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Got that one checked off. Let's start over. J Shumi, J S H U M I E at AOL.com. And I believe those are all the announcements I have. Um, let's take a moment of silence and we'll begin the service. Continue the service. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord, Lord is risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. All right, one more time. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If then you've been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. And I remind all of you on Zoom, please mute your microphones. We can hear, hear pages turning and things like that. Thank you. So we are in the Book of Common Prayer on page 80 in the morning prayer service. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim thy praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is, is now, now and, and will, will be forever. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Christ, Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. 
not with old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Hallelujah. Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came the death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ shall all be made alive. Hallelujah. Psalm 31. In the Book of Common Prayer, it's page 622. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me for you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hands of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant, and in your loving kindness save me. Together. Glory to the Father, to the Father and, and, to the Son, and to the Holy Son, and Spirit, the Holy Spirit as, it as it was in the beginning, is and now, and it will be forever. forever. Amen. Jane, you want to unmute your microphone. <clears throat> Thank you. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout, all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid, coat, laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute, Jane. Stop everything. Stop everything. Did you all catch that? Did you catch that the coats of those stoning Stephen were laid at the foot of whom? Saul. Later becomes, oh, were you answering that question, Lark? At the foot of whom? Saul. Saul, very good, Laura. Who later becomes become Saul. Saul. So, so Saul, future Paul, heard the whole sermon. By the way, it is a long story of the stoning of Stephen. We just got the, the, the little part of it. Paul heard the whole gospel preached and then witnessed our first martyr, Stephen, being stoned to death and Stephen's asking God to forgive the people doing it. So on one level, we have to think that enraged Saul because after that, he began persecuting Christians. But it also laid the groundwork for his conversion. All right, Jane, you can go back to what you were doing. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he knelt down 
and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Canticle 16, the Song of Zechariah. In the Book of Common Prayer, it's on page 92. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. The second Are lesson I today is from John. Um, the true vine. Oh, go ahead. I just can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Go right on ahead. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. So abide in me as I abide in you, just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, and you are the branch stem, bear much fruit, because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whosoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is good my disciples. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and redeemer. Amen. Amen. This morning on Zoom, I listened to Kelly Steele preach from this very location here at St. Peter's in Savannah. And she talked about a different gospel reading because as you probably remember, we decided to linger in Jerusalem in those readings right before Jesus went to the cross because we were hoping we could uh, all gather back for Easter somewhat soon. Well, that has not turned out, so we're going to get on the regular schedule very soon of the regular lectionary readings. Our epistle and Old Testament lesson are the same as everybody else. But one of the things she was talking about was, among many wonderful things, is how to reach out and stay in touch. And she was quoting the CDC guidelines during this pandemic, 
suggestions on how to handle anxiety. One of them, of course, is to breathe. Uh, some of the standard ones you would think about. But the last one was to reach out. Reach out to other people. Reach out and touch them. Reach out and be a part of their lives. Don't wait on people to reach out to you. And what occurs to me in these stories in Jerusalem is Jesus is preparing to go to the cross. Today's reading appointed for the day was John 14, the one we read at funerals many oftentimes. In my house are many mansions, and I am I'm, I'm here to comfort you. I'm here to be with you. And in this reading, I'm going to step up on this step. That makes things a little better. In uh, this reading, Jesus says, I am the vine, and abide with me. Abide with me, I'll abide with you. As I abide with the Father, this, these all three in one are abiding, and, and I am the vine. Well, I got up and close with vines over this last week or so. You know, when you come home, there are a lot of honeydews to do. Bishop Smiley, please let us come back to church. I'm getting exhausted from all these honeydews. I want to come back into our facilities. And when we're allowed to, phase three, we will go back. But I've been in the middle of a lot of vines. And one thing about vines is you can't tell where one begins and where the other starts. You're not sure where it's attached to the main vine. There are also prickly vines in, uh, in the south. We call them stickers. I'll ask later what we call them in Wyoming. I think it's a good metaphor for the church. And one of the things the commentators were saying that is so clear, this is about community. This is about hanging in there together, abiding with one another, no vine being more important than another vine because they're all merged and you can't tell which is more important. <laughs> so this abiding in Jesus is much like I'm the good shepherd. It's much like all these other images that Jesus has of staying one with him I'm in you, you're in me, we're with the Father. So I've got some advice on how to abide in Jesus. Would you like to hear it? Just nod your heads on Zoom. Thank you, Laurie, thank you. Uh, maybe comment on Facebook if you'd like to. Here's how I think you should abide in Jesus. Attend our church, give money to the church, Pray the daily office. Spend time in prayer with God. But you guess what? Now, I'm just kidding here. I'm not kidding so much. But I have an image of what it is to be one with God and to abide with God. But the cool thing about these many different vines is I hear many ways to abide with Jesus. And one is often said, I abide in Jesus by serving the poor. I abide in Jesus by calling people up. I abide in Jesus by, as Jesus said, what we've done to the least of these, we've done them unto Jesus. So there is no cookie cutter way to abide with Jesus. Just ask yourself, how am I abiding with Jesus? Whatever that answer is, that's how you're going to do it. And I trust that we will reach out, not just to our neighbors, not just with a phone call, but reach out to Jesus, reach out to God. Because it is in doing that that we'll get through this pandemic together, though socially distant. Abide in Jesus. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now if you will please join me in the Apostles' Creed.
can be found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 96 if you are using your prayer book today. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The reading is from suffragists for the season of coronavirus. Let us pray to the Lord who is our refuge and stronghold for the health and well-being of our nation that all who are fearful and anxious may be at peace and free from worry. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the isolated and housebound, that we may be alert to their needs and care for them in their vulnerability. <laughs> Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, graciously hear us. For our homes and families, our schools and young people, and all in any kind of need or distress. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For a blessing on our local community, that our neighborhoods may be places of trust and friendship, where all are known and cared for. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. On this Mother's Day, we give thanks to God for the divine gift of motherhood in all its diverse forms. Let us pray for all the mothers with us today, for our own mothers, those living and those who have passed away, for the mothers that loved us and those who feel short of loving us fully, for all who hope to be mothers someday, and for those whose hope to have children has been frustrated for all mothers who have lost children, for all women and men who have mothered others in any way, those who have been our substitute mothers and we who have done so for those in need <clears throat> and for the earth that bore us and provides us with our sustenance. We pray this all in the name of God, our great and loving mother, amen. 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 Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Prayers of the people. We pray for the church throughout the world that all who profess to honor the risen Lord may be faithful in their witness and courageous in their testimony to the way of Jesus. 
We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, John, our bishop, and Jim and Lara, our priests, and all bishops and other ministers that by the power of the Holy Spirit, they may seek to build the church upon Christ, the cornerstone, and humbly lead in faithful service. We pray for the governments of the world and their leaders, especially Donald, our president, and the courts and the Congress, that nations may dwell in peace, that goodwill will prevail over strife, and people of faith may freely worship as their hearts direct. We pray for rain and sun in proper measure and for abundant food and water for all who dwell upon the earth. We pray for the sick and those in need and for any who are oppressed by the wounds of the soul. We pray for our neighbors that we may live together in amity and that strangers amongst us may find us to be hospitable friends. We pray for our enemies, that their sins may be forgiven them and that they may find your peace. Almighty God, your son promised to grant whatever we ask in his name. By your Holy Spirit, empower us to minister to the world as his faithful disciples, that our work may testify to what we pray and show forth your eternal glory through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. At this point, I invite you, if you have prayers you want to speak out loud, to unmute your microphone for a minute and utter their names. In Facebook Live, as I see you're already doing, add your prayers in the comment section. Charlene asks prayers for Dolores and for Steve. For Soren and Ashton's anniversary. For Chuck and Margaret in times of dis disgruntlement and upset in their family. I pray for my daughter who um, goes back to work tomorrow. I pray for all my grandchildren who are struggling with Jobs or no jobs. Prayers for Roman Overstreet, who was involved in an accident last night. I ask prayers for the repose of the soul of Margaret. Mm. I ask for prayers for my mother that is still in quarantine uh, on this precious Mother's Day and um, that she find comfort from our phone calls. And in light of that, Helen Bird asks prayers for mothers who are alone. Jackie Waters for all first responders and mothers. I pray for Josh to keep him safe as he works at the hospital in Denver. Amen. Charlene prays for strength for Renee. For my daughter Jackie, who uh, works at the Riverton Hospital, and that is the hot spot for Wyoming for coronavirus. That she may rest on her days off and and uh, continue to do the work that needs to be done. And also Susie for my Del friend, Go also ahead. For my friend Paul, uh, he's in pain and in waiting for a hip replacement. Susie Delger, pray for all nurses, and Lee Engel for his daughter, continued prayer for cancer treatments. Oh, okay. Carol Kilgore asked prayers for our dear children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. 
Well, let's just say. Okay. Go ahead. On Zoom, Lynn George asks prayers for Mike, who's on chemo. For Michael Stepp with multi organ failure. Mm. For Melissa, mm. mother of Roman and her mother, quarantined far from home. Mm. And now we remember those who celebrate birthdays, Tyler, Joe, Colby, Heidi, JC, Charlene, Leela, and Audrey Cotherman who celebrates 90 long, 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 long years. Yay. Wonderful years. Happy Everybody birthday. clap. <laughs> so uh, let us pray together as all of you members of St. Mark's I know have memorized the prayer but keep yourself muted please watch over your children O Lord as their days increase bless and guide them wherever they may be strengthen them when they stand comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful raise them up if they fall and in their hearts may thy peace, which passeth understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Are there any other prayers? Uh, oh, we pray, remember Steve for his birthday and Cheryl Cunningham for her birthday. And Laura, I'll let you know right before we end if there are more prayers. Perfect. So we'll continue in the Book of Common Prayer on page 101 with the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, you've given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. If you'll please sit in silence and listen to the postlude.
God bless everybody. Have a great day. Thank you. God bless. Hallelujah.